So what is PAPR and what's its relationship to OFDM? And this stands for peak to average power ratio. So let's consider a signal like this, maybe the recording of my voice. And this is the voltage waveform. And don't forget the power equals the voltage squared divided by the resistance. So if we want to look at the peak to average power ratio, we can take the square of this voltage and for a unit resistance, uh, we would have the power waveform. And then we could look at the peak and divide it by the average. And that would give us the peak to average power ratio. Now let's consider what we have to do when we digitize this signal. So here I've drawn eight levels. So this would be represented by three bits if we were to store it in a computer. So three bits gives you eight levels. And what would the signal look like if we, this particular signal that I've drawn look like, if we quantized it to one of these eight levels. And so I'm just going to do a crude uh, drawing here of what it might look like. Uh, and it's going to be important for us to be thinking about why the peak to average power ratio is important for any signal and more importantly afterwards OFDM. So in this case what would it look like? Well it's going to quantize to the nearest value and so this would be the, the green that I'm drawing here would be an approximation to the quantized version and it always uh, crosses halfway between the levels uh, and uh, this green version would be what you would receive and store in your computer. So in this case, for this waveform that I've drawn, the green quantized waveform looks very similar and it's a good estimation of the original signal. But what if our signal looked like this, for example? What if our signal looked like this uh, and then had uh, some spiky bits in the signal? Now it might be that all of these small per perturbations here might be very important to us. But if we were to quantize this signal to those same levels, then we'd see that all of these part of the signal here would get lost in that quantization uh, because you would simply be quantizing to uh, one of these levels here where the spike happens, but the rest of the signal, it would be quantized to just that single level along there. And you would lose all the information in the signal from those small up and down components of the signal. So in this case, this signal here has a high peak to average ratio. That's the peak to average power ratio. And this signal, when we quantize it, we're gonna lose all that information. So let's think about that when we think about a communication system. So this is one reason why peak to average power ratio for any signals is important, especially when you're quantizing. So let's look at its relation to OFDM in mobile, modern mobile communications. Well, here I'm just going to draw uh, the main uh, components at baseband of a receiver. So this is an antenna. Uh, this is the amplifier that's amplifying the signal coming out of the receiver. And then it goes into a baseband. It goes into an analog to digital converter. And then you're going to detect which sing signal was sent, which digital signal was sent. So you've got a detector uh, that comes after the an analog to digital converter. That's making the decisions of whether the digital bit was a one or a zero or whichever con uh, constellation point it was from a multi-level signaling scheme. So one thing that you've got to do as a, as a designer here, your analog to digital converter has a certain range. For here, this was the range from the top sample to the bottom. That's what's going to be the range at the input of your analog to digital converter. Uh, it's also going to have the number of levels. So there's eight levels here from three bits, and you get to choose those as an engineer. Also, you've got an ability to adapt the gain on this amplifier. And what you want to do is adapt this gain to match the range of your analog to digital converter. So let's look at one example of what I mean by that. So let's consider that we have uh, amplitude shift keying and let's consider uh, four amplitude shift keying, four ASK for example, and let's consider these are our four levels. So that level there, this one, this one, and this one. So we're going to send a signal 
which can only take one of these four values. And let's say there's zero in the middle. So let's say this is one and this is three. There's two in the middle there. Uh, this is minus one and minus three. So let's say these are voltages and again in the baseband. And we're gonna send a signal, let's say for example, a signal that is going from a digital uh, level one up to a level three, followed perhaps by minus one, uh, followed by let's say minus three. So this is a waveform that we have uh, that's in time. And this would be each, each of these four levels can represent two bits. So perhaps digital 00, 01, 10, 11, for example. So this is our waveform in time. If we put, uh, if we manage to achieve, this is, let's say this is the receive signal and let's say there's no noise, for example, so an ideal situation where you've managed to adjust the gain of your amplifier so that coming out of this amplifier, this is what the signal looks like. And then your analog to digital converter, if it had, for example, two bits, then you could have the levels of your analog to digital converter, like the levels up here. You could have the levels here if I did two bits. Uh, you could have the levels to be these levels here. And then when this signal here comes out of your amplifier and goes into your analog to digital converter, this quantization with this range, this dynamic range, would match very well with the signal. And this would be mapped to that level, this would be coming through and, and sampled at that level, discretized like we did up here with the green. So this would be what you'd like to do ideally. Now what is the peak to average power ratio for this 4 ASK? Well, it's given to us by the quantization, sorry, by the constellation point levels. So in this case, the peak is three volts and the average, you would square each of these and divide them over time to get the average power. And the peak power is uh, three squared. Uh, and if it was through a unit resistor, then that would be a value of nine. And you'd look at the average power, divide one by the other to get the peak to average power ratio. Uh, now, this is in a basic single channel uh, baseband communication system, but we want to think about OFDM. Okay, one step just simply before then, uh, let's look at uh, what's in the frequency domain uh, here. So in the frequency domain, we have uh, the frequency, the spectrum of this signal here, just to remind ourselves, uh, this is a signal which is changing at a rate of capital T. So at zero times zero and t and two t and three t and so on. And this is in the frequency domain, uh, a sync function. And if you want more information on this, there are more videos on the channel about this. So in OFTM, what we're doing is OFTM, instead of sending these simple on off signals, in OFTM, we're sending multiple signals at the same time on different carriers, the orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. And again, there's other videos on the channel on OFDM to know more about that. So check those ones out if you're needing more information. Uh, let's uh, look at this first channel, and this would be a signal which has one phase during the time period capital T. Uh, so this is, uh, this is time and this is capital T. And now we're starting to look at OFDM. And this is the signal uh, which, is which is at this frequency range. Okay, so this signal here is at this frequency range, uh, and then uh, it's multiplied by a constellation point. So here we're multiplying by minus one, uh, by minus three, minus one, one, or three in the amplitude shift keying case. In the OFDM case, we're multiplying by a constellation value, which is just a complex number. So this is in the first channel. Let's say that's complex number C1. So these are the, the, they're going to take values like this, except complex for OFDM. So that's our first subchannel, looks like this. Our second subchannel is at double the frequency. And here is, uh, it's in the frequency domain, it's occupying this part of the band. And again, I think you're, if you're familiar with OFDM, you're familiar with these kind of pictures. In the third channel, it's this part of the frequency band. Uh, and they're all orthogonal to each other and parallel next to each other in the frequency. That's what it means to say orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. So each of these subcarriers, which is in each of these different frequency bands, is going to be multiplied by a different complex number. 
and I've just drawn the first five of them here, but there are more than just five. Uh, it depends on which uh, standard you're using. And so, for example, it could be 512 or 1024, for example. Okay, so in this case, I've drawn different constel uh, different phases here to start each of these waveforms to indicate to you and show you that this is uh, this waveform in the first carrier is being multiplied by C1. So that's a phase that starts down low and starts going up. C3, for example, has zero phase. It's a sine wave which starts exactly at the starting of the time period. This is time zero for the teeth. For, for, the, for this symbol period. So this one is at that frequency and has zero phase. It's just a sine wave. This one is a slightly adjusted sine wave, you can see, starting a bit below. This one starts at the bottom, so it has a different phase. And each of these phases is given by this complex number. And in OFDM, as you will have seen in the other videos, you take these complex numbers and you put them through an inverse fast Fourier transform, an inverse discrete Fourier transform, and it gives you a time domain waveform, which is the addition of all of these waveforms. So these all get added in time and sent in the channel. And because they're all orthogonal in different frequency bands, uh, they are all able to be decoded at the receiver. So let's look at this particular example I've drawn and let's notice one interesting thing. I've I've carefully selected each of these phases, so the start of these waveforms, I've carefully selected them here so that in this particular example for this choice of phases, for this particular choice of phases, the, there's a peak in each of these waveforms at this particular time. Don't forget this is time in this direction and I've and for these particular choice of phases, which might be some of the phases that were chosen from QAM constellation points for the data that you're trying to send, it happens, let's say you've chosen these particular phases to start each of these waveforms, it, it would, if you'd chosen this way, then you would see there would be a peak in each of these waveforms at this particular time. And so if we draw what happens when you take these and you put these through the inverse discrete Fourier transform, which is what happens in OFDM, to give you the time domain signal that you're going to actually send, then there would be a big peak at this time because each of these adds up and the addition of this peak plus this peak plus this plus this plus this, all of these peaks adding up at the same time will give a big peak in the waveform at that time. And the other times, you can't see any times where they exactly add up. At this time, the first one is a minimum when this one's, when the second one is a maximum. Okay, the third's a maximum, but then you've also got a minimum in this C5 at that time. And you can look down here and see that some of them add up to various different degrees at different times, and it gives you a waveform that looks something like this. And of course, there's many, many more, not just the five that I've shown. So this is a waveform which can occur in OFDM in the time domain as the actual waveform that you're going to transmit in the time domain. And this one clearly has a very high peak to average power ratio. So in this case, if we were to take our quantization points that we had over here from the other uh, example over here, and if we were to use the same, constel uh, the same quantizations uh, over here on our QAM, uh, sorry, on our OFDM signal, then what would we would be seeing would be that if we did these ones here, then the top of this peak would be being chopped off because there's no quantization point above that voltage. So the quantization points are only between uh, where I've got my ruler here. So the maximum is at the top of the ruler, the minimum is at the bottom. And these would be then chopping off, I think you can see chopping off the peak of this, it would just simply be going across here when we would put it through our analog to digital converter. And at the other time slots, we'd be getting sometimes positive uh, the, this, this level here, um, this, this middle one's not a level, it's only these four levels. So this would be this level, um, is it some here that's going down to that level probably, so it's probably a waveform that looks uh, like this, um, like this. So if I were to draw this one here, it gets closer to this one here, so it would come down to there, um, but then it goes back up to this one, and all of those I think are closer to this level than this level. So 
all of the interest, just like I drew up here, this in this example here, all of the interesting part or many of the interesting parts of our waveform, which are very important for uh, for our OFDM data and digital information, they would all be lost. Uh, this is assuming we just had this two bit quantization, uh, of course. Now, of course, you're gonna have more than two bits of quantization, but the, the message here is clear. In OFDM, you can get waveforms with high peaks. So you have a couple of choices when designing this gain in OFDM. If you make the gain very small, so the gain is not very big, then you could compress this so that this peak was compressed and you didn't lose information about the height of the peak. So if you compress this down, uh, made G small, then you would, you would retain information about the peak, which is a good thing to do. The problem with that would be you would be also compressing all of this part of the signal and it would be making it even worse than what I've just shown here uh, where you're losing already in the example I've shown, you're losing a lot of that information when you go into this analog to digital converter. The other thing you could do is maybe make the gain bigger, then you lose the information about the peak, but you could make this part of the signal amplified even more, and then you might be you would be able certainly to be able to get more information in your quantized version about this part of the signal. So those are the two choices in OFDM, and that's why it's such a problem. Another aspect with OFDM is it's not always the case that you get a signal with a peak. Lots of the signals in OFDM will simply be uh, existing in this part of the voltage range, if this was a, a second uh, signal that I was, I was showing here, different symbol, if they added up differently with different choices of C1 to C5, they might add up like I've just drawn here. If you've got your gain set such that it captures the peak, then it would be compressing all of this. And in this waveform, you probably wouldn't be getting any information uh, if you were to have compressed it to allow for a peak, but it didn't have a peak. Of course, in, in uh, real implemented OFDM systems, you have many more than two bits in your quantizer, but even if you have many, many more bits, even if you have eight bits or 10 bits or 12 bits in your quantizer, you're still faced with this problem that the peak in OFDM can be very, very high, and you've got the challenge of, do you try to pick a gain which enables the peak to be captured within the quantization range, or do you pick a gain which means that you can get all this information from the rest of the signal? And that's the actual challenge with peak to average power ratio in OFDM. So if you found this video helpful, uh, please give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the webpage in the link below for a full categorized list of all the videos on the channel.